Okay, we're reading Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss's sleep book, and I'm Jack. I'm Brad. I'm Abinash. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the news just came in from the county of Keck that a very small bug by the name of Van Bleck is yawning so wide you can look down his neck. This is this may not seem very important, I know, but it is, so I'm bothering telling you so. A yawn is quite catching, you see, like a cough. It takes one yawn to start other yawns off. Now the news has come in that some friends of Van Flex are yawning so wide you can look down their necks. Thank you. At this moment right now, under seven more noses, great yawns are in blossom. They're blooming like roses. The yawn of the that little bug is still spreading. According to the latest reports, it is heading across the wide fields through the sleepy night air, across the whole country toward each, every which where, and people are gradually starting to say, I feel rather drowsy. I've had quite a day. Creatures are starting to think about rest. Two biffer bomb birds are now building their nests. They do it each night, and quite often I wonder how they do this big job without making a blunder. But that is their problem, not yours and not mine. The point is, they're going to bed, and that's fine. <clears throat> Sleep thoughts are spreading throughout the whole land. The time for night bursting of teeth is at hand. Up at Herkheimer Falls, where the great river rushes and crashes down crags in the great gargling gushes. The Herkheimer sisters are using their brushes. Those falls are just grand for toothbrushing beneath. If you happen to be up uh, that way with your teeth. The news just came in from the castle of Krupp that the lights are all out and the drawbridge is up. And the old drawbridge drawer said with a yawn, my drawbridge is drawn and it's going to stay drawn till the milkman delivers the milk about dawn. I'm going to bed now, so nobody better come around with a special delivery letter. The number of sleepers is steadily growing. Bed is where more and more people are going. In Culpeper Springs, the stilt walkers hall, the stilt walker stilts are stacked on the wall. The stilt walker, stilt walker walkers have called it a day. They're all tucked out and they're snoozing away. This is a very big deal and it's very important to know, and that's why I'm bothering telling you so. Way out in the west, the, in the town of Merced, Hinklehorn Honking Club just went to bed. Every horn has been quietly hung on a hook for, no, for the night in the own private Hinklehorn nook. All this long happy day, they've been honking about, and the Hinklehorn honkers have honked themselves out. But they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning, and then... They'll start right in hickle honking again. Everywhere creatures are falling asleep, the collapsible frank just collapsed in a heap. And by adding the frank to the others before, I'm able to give you the who's asleep score. Right now, 40,404 creatures are happily deeply in slumber. I think you'll agree that's a whopping fine number. <clears throat> Counting up sleepers is just how we do it. Uh, really quite simple. There's nothing much to it. We find out how many, and we learn the amount by an audio tele o tele o count. On a mountain halfway between Reno and Rome, we have a machine in a plexiglass dome, which listens and looks into everyone's home. And when it sees the new sleeper go flop, it jingles and lets a new bingo ball flop drop. Uh, our clap counts these balls as they pull up in a cup. And uh, that's how we know who's down and who's up. Do you talk in your sleep? It's a wonderful sport. And I have some news of this sport to report. The world champion sleep talkers, Joe and Mo Reds Off, have just gone to sleep and they're talking their heads off. 
for 55 years now each chattering brother has babbled and ga gabbled all night to the other <coughs> they've talked about laws and they've talked about gods they've talked about paws and they've talked about flaws they've talked quite a lot about old santa claus yeah. and the reason i'm telling you this is because you should take up this sport it's fine for the jobs Did you walk in your sleep? I just had a report of some interesting news of this popular sport. Near Finnegan Fen, there's a sleepwalking group, which not only walks, but it walks a little hoop. Every night they go miles, why they walk such a length. They have, been, they have to keep eating to keep up with their strength. So every so often, one puts down his hoop, stops hooping, and does some quick snooping for soup. That's why they are known as the Hoop Soup Snoop Crew. <laughs> sleepwalking, too, are the curious Crandles, who sleepwalk on hills with assorted sized candles. The Crandles walk nightly in slumbering peace in spite of slight burns from the hot, dripping grease. The Crandles wear candles because they walk far, and if they wake up, they want to see where they are. Now the news has arrived from the Valley of Vale that the that a chip pendo moth has just been bitten by his tail. Why he does every night before shutting his eyes. Such nipping sounds silly, but really it's wise. I'll bet. He has no alarm clock, so this is the way he makes sure that he'll wake up at the right time of day. His tail is so long he won't feel any pain till the nap makes the trip and gets up to his brain. In exactly eight hours, the chip it and dale mup will at least feel the bite and yell, ouch, and wake up. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. J. Car Carmichael Crocs have just gone to bed near the town of Fort Knox, and they, by the way, have the finest of clocks. I'm not at all sure that I quite understand, but how the thing works with that one extra hand. But I do know this clock does not does one very slick trick. It just trick. It doesn't tick tock how it goes. It tick tock tick. <laughs> so with ticks in its little talker and talks in its ticker, it saves a lot of time and the sleepers sleep quicker. All bad. What a fine night for sleeping. From all that I hear, it's the best night for sleeping in many a year. They're even asleep in the Zwieback Motel, and people don't usually sleep there too well. The beds are like rocks, and everyone knows the sheets are too short. They won't cover your toes, so if people are actually sleeping in there, it's a great night for sleeping. It must be the air. Great night for snores. I just had a report of some boys who are tops in this musical sport. The snoriest snorers on, on, in all our fair land are Snorter McPhail and a snore sort Ben. The Spaniard can snore Dixie and Old Swanee River so, so loud it would make 40 elephants sugar. The loudest of all the boys is McPhail. He snores with his head in a three-gallon pail. So they snore in the cave 20 miles out of town. If they snored close in, closer in, they would snore the town down. Do you know who's asleep out in Funa Laguna? Two very nice Funa Laguna Babuna. <laughs> Uh, we've added them into our Who's Asleep count, which has grown to a really amazing amount. Exactly 8,808,000 creatures are sleeping now. Isn't that great? A jet in the bed in the bed of a jet is the softest of beds in the world. It is said he makes it from pom-poms and grows on his head.
um, and he's sleeping right now in the softest of fluff, completely exhausted from growing this stuff. The news has come in front of the district of Delft that oft are asleep and they're sleeping a lot. And how are they able to sleep off the ground? I tell you, I weighed one last week and I found that oft is so light he weighs minus one pound. Um, speaking of dreaming, I think you should know that every Bumble Tub Club is now dreaming of float. Every night they go dreaming down the Bumble Tub Creek, except for one night every third or fourth week, when they stop for repairs because their Bumble Tub sleep. But tonight they're afloat, full of dreams, full of bliss, and that's why I'm bothering to tell you this. Fork of the road in the Vale of Vadu Vavud. Five foot wary salesmen have laid down their load. All day they've raced around in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell Zizzer Zoof seeds, which nobody wants because nobody needs. Tomorrow will come, they'll go back to their chore, they'll start on the road, Zizzer Zoofing once more. But tonight, they've forgotten their feet are so sore, and that's what their wonderful night is time for. Everywhere creatures have shut off their voices, they've gone to bed, and the beds of their choices. They're sleeping in bushes, they're sleeping in crannies, some of their stomachs, and some of their fannies. They're peacefully sleeping in comfortable holes, some even on soft, tufted barber shop poles. The number of sleepers is now past the millions, and the number of sleepers is now in the billions. They're sleeping on steps, and on strings, and on floors, in mailboxes, ships, and keyholes of doors. Every worm on a fish hook is safe for the night. Every fish in the sea is too sleepy to bite. Every whale in the ocean has turned off its his bow. Every light between here and far foodle is out. And now, adding the things up, we are way beyond billions. Our hoots asleep score is now up to zillions. Ninety-nine zillion, nine trillion, and two creatures are sleeping. So how about you? When you put out your light, then the number will be 99 zillion, 9 trillion, and 3. Good night. Okay, the end. Yeah, we're doing, that's, uh, what's it called? Dr. Seuss's Sleep Book by Dr. Seuss.